Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna be uh, hopefully finishing Chucky's truck up. We gotta get the fuel tank installed. We gotta finish it up. Uh, we gotta install his gauges in there. I'll show you guys how I do the gauges. We just gotta get everything finished up in the dash right there. Get all that finished up, get the carpet back in, seat back in. We've got a few little things to finish this thing up. We're probably also gonna have to take a trip down to Chattanooga, get that drive shaft fixed up in the front. We may attempt to do that ourselves. We'll see, I've done it on a couple of them. Uh, with it only being the front yoke we got to change out, might not be that big of a deal. We got several little things we got to finish up, but we're getting very close. You saw in the last couple videos, really boring videos, man. We were just doing wiring, but we've got this thing cranking over on the stock ignition. If you guys don't know how to wire the Crown Vic wiring harness up to your F100 stock ignition, go check out that video. Uh, I do a pretty thorough walkthrough on how it works and I provide a little picture on the wiring part that worked for me. I know there are a couple different wiring schematics, I guess you would call it, or wiring. The wiring's different colors in some vehicles. I think from like 05 and up, it's a little bit different than the 03 and 04 Crown Vicks. But hopefully it'll lead you in the right direction and help you out a little bit. We're gonna be trying out, we've been trying out a new camera situation, a new mic stuff. So work with me through that, man. Sorry if the audio is a little up and down here and there. I'm trying to get it all together and try to make it better for you guys. Same thing with the camera. Um, it's been going a little blurry in and out here and there. Uh, some, some angles or pictures might be bright, some might be dark. I'm just, I'm learning all this stuff. I didn't think working around the garage, I was gonna have to figure out how to be a, a dang microphone and a camera professional too, and learn what shutters and frames per second and white balance and all this stuff is. Now I'm having to learn all this crap. I don't even know what the heck that means, but trying to get it together and make the video quality better for you guys. And uh, so yeah, we're just gonna quit yapping and jump right in and get to work. I think we are gonna start with that fuel tank today. I'd like to set that thing in place, cut that bed out, get the fuel lines and the electrical ran to it so that way we can actually see if this thing will just fire up. We know that's cranking over, but we need to hear that fuel pump prime. We need to get some uh, fuel up to it and just get that thing fired up. All right, we got this camera in follow mode today. We're gonna be trying this out again today. Kind of like our free cameraman. See if it'll be able to keep up with me as I move around. Yeah, it seems to be doing pretty good. Hopefully it'll keep up with the audio. The other day, it kept deleting all my audio. Every time I would record a video, I'd have a dang five minute clip and go check it out. The audio would be gone. Couldn't find it anywhere. Still pretty new to all this stuff. But we got our tank here. We need to get it in the bed of the truck and get a measurement of it so we can cut out the floor. I like to cut the floor out a little bit. It recesses that thing down a little bit. Not much. We get about four inches out of it, but if you don't, I'll show you guys. It's like level with the top of the bed, and if you build a little cover for it, it just don't look good. At least we recess it down. That box is recessed in a little bit, kind of drops it down. You can put a tonneau cover or something on there. It'll get rid of that. Let's carry this around to the bed and get some measurements. All right, we got to get this thing over there. Well, how do you get this thing in gear? Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Ooh. Keep up with me. Okay, before we get too far, I'm gonna stop this camera and just make sure it hasn't deleted all my audio. Oh dang, you're following me around good. I can't keep up with you to turn you off, huh? All right, heck yeah, it seems like the audio is keeping up. I just checked it, it's keeping up. So maybe today will be a little bit better. Let's see, we're gonna go ahead and get all this stuff out of the bed. We got a bunch of stuff back here. Need to get out of the camera, still keeping up with me? Yeah, that's freaking awesome, man. That is awesome. All right, we got all these straps in the way. We need to get out of the way. We've got, uh, oh crap, we're gonna roll through the garage door. Probably need to put a chalk behind the wheel. We've got this wiring here that he used for his toggle switch to the AC. We still may have to run that. Haven't made it that far yet. We really just wanted to make sure this thing would crank over before we started messing with the AC. And I've got a few screws right here that go to these little door, these little door seals that hold the carpet down. These right here. Get those and set those out of the way. I don't really know where to put these. I don't want to lose all these little screws, and I know we're going to be moving the bed around doing a lot of stuff. I'm going to take it. We'll set it up here for now. We'll set these screws right on this edge. And if I forget that, you guys be sure to remind me that I got that over there. See how cool is that, man? That's freaking crazy. The camera's following me around. Really blows my mind. That is awesome. Okay, we need to get this tank up in the bed. Luckily, it's kind of empty today. Sometimes these things are full and dang heavy as heck. We'll go ahead and pull this neck on out of here. Just give it a twist. You gotta be careful. Hopefully I don't do it. 
This little plastic tip right here is just clipped on. And if you jiggle that thing too much, that will fall off down into the tank. Had it happen before. So just be careful when you're jiggling that thing out. We're gonna put a little rag down in that. We're gonna shove a rag in your gas hole. Hey buddy, I can see your gas hole is wide open. Here, let me, let me wipe off your gas hole a little bit. Ugh, nasty gas hole. Got a little black on my hand. It's not the first time. Okay, tank in the bed. Got that in there. All right, the way I usually kind of center this thing up is, uh, I know you can't see it from there, but on the back of the tank, it's got the little, uh, it's like, I don't know what the heck you call it. You know how the bed floor is like ribbed or whatever? It comes up and down like that. The tank is like that also. So the center one, I line it up with the center rib right there, or there's a mark on the glass. That kind of gives you a good centering point. Or a lot of people do this. You can use a tape measure. You can use, just use a tape measure, measure from that side and that side, and that'll center it up for you pretty good. But I like to use, I like to use my old laser eye level myself. Now, now we're gonna get a tape measure. Hopefully I'm not gone too long and that camera will be able to keep back up with me. I'm not sure if it kept up with me, did it? That whole way? No, it lost me, didn't it? Boom, did it pop? Heck yeah, I was able to get it back on me. All you gotta do, if it loses track of you, is you just stand in front of it, hold your hand up. I'm not gonna do it because I might confuse it, but hold your hand up for like the gesture style or whatever. You'll find me, start following me around like whoop, 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 whoop. Yep, that thing's pretty good, man. Pretty good. All right, God's got me out of breath. All right, so now we just need to get a measurement from, I'm gonna come out from the wall there out here and I'm probably gonna come out, I'm probably gonna give it like an extra inch across the back right there. That way we've got room to set it down and maybe run some straps and stuff. So yeah, just measure and come out there. And it's pretty easy, like I said, to get the center. You can see this one right here splits this one right here so we'll probably just draw a marker i'll actually probably come to the outside of this line here probably run a line there go across do the same thing on the other side drop to the other side of that hump run across we'll just take out this whole little piece that'll recess that down but you'll see what i'm saying see how close this is here by the time you build a little box over because this is the top but really it's got to come up higher because this humps up a little and it would just be too level and it would look dumb from the side right here you'd still see the box this is when we do that it'll recess it down a little bit more not much but it'll get it down enough to where it'll kind of be hidden a little i'm sure you guys have seen me do it in some of the other videos and i would like to come up with a different way to do that man if some of you guys got an idea shoot it over to me in the comments i'm still really new at some of this stuff man and uh, i've just been running it like that on kathy's truck i know i haven't talked to you guys about that one but if you have seen that old 64 slick in the background outside the shop out there that's Kathy's little short bed, and we're gonna be doing something really cool with that coming up. That one's gonna be a really cool build. And we're gonna do something different with that. We're gonna do the 4.6 in it, but I don't wanna use this gas tank like that. I would like to use, I want, I want it to be clean as heck, man, as clean as we can get it. So we're gonna do a different gas tank. We're probably gonna do, we're going to use the compressor from the 4.6, but we're gonna adapt it with the, uh, the vintage air under dash kit or something like that. We're not gonna build the firewall on that one. And I would like to kind of get away from that, if possible, from the kits. I would like to learn that style. The kits that I've been looking at look pretty awesome. And there's some cheaper ones, man. I'm actually going to start out with the cheap $300 eBay one just to test it out first. And if it works, awesome. If it don't, then we'll work our way up. But it's worth a try to see. Uh, you won't have no air box like that right there. It's going to be nice and smooth. You'll have your two lines that ran into your heater core in the firewall. Those will still be going in, and then you'll have your two AC lines that look that usually go into that box. They'll be going into the firewall too, and they'll go up and disappear behind the dash. Looks like a nice clean setup. That's what we're gonna probably try to do on Kathy's truck. But for right now, let's go ahead and let's, let's get this tank marked up, and then we'll pull it back out of the way. We'll get the plasma cutter hooked up and go ahead and cut that chunk out of the floor, set it down, start getting our wiring to it, and our gas line ran over. All right, so. We're gonna measure out a little bit. Let's see how far. You don't want that thing shoved all the way against the bed too. So you do wanna give it a little bit of space out. It looks like 11 inches would be plenty. It's 10 tied up to the back of this. You can see it comes out a little. I don't wanna come back too far either, you know, and make it really stupid. So, man, I think, let's do 11 and a half. Let's do 11 and a half. 
And just follow that line all the way in there. Okay, let's get a measurement for 11 and a half on the other side. Okay, and run that marker down that line. So we got to use that one. Where'd my level go? There we go. All right, we can go ahead and pull this gas tank out of the way now because I can't get my, my marker up in there to make a good enough line. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Man, take it easy, buddy. Golly. It's Friday morning. All right, we're going to get this tank out of the way. We want to make sure we still keep it nice and close by, though, so that way when we're grinding, the sparks hit it. Man, I can't believe that thing still follow me around like that. It's pretty crazy. All right, let's get this metal out of the way. All right, all right, all right. Now let's hop in here and make our mark. Okay. See you in a half, one half. We got a little piece of gravel trying to fight us here. All right, get that marked in real good. All right, now I'm gonna get the plasma cutter set up. That way we can get in here and blast all that stuff out of the way. We'll keep this nearby because I'm gonna use my, that as a guide for the plasma cutter. We're gonna need a spot to grind down so that we got a good ground on this thing. How in the heck did you get tangled up like that? All right, we're gonna make ourselves a little grind spot. <laughs> Not without plugging it in first. We'll set that back there. We might need that again here later. Uh, we're going to need some different goggles for this. Hopefully the audio and stuff seems to be doing better in this video. Um, I've been fiddling with it since the last video and doing some research. If you guys buy the DJI Mic 2, it's a really good kit, man. You can, uh, you can just Bluetooth it straight to your phone. But it does have a couple little flaws. In some of the videos I was watching, the DJI Mic 1 actually sounded better than the 2. How the heck did we get back in that bed? But it's only because it had a bad firmware on the uh, DJI Mic 2. So if you got it, you noticed how maybe it sounded a little muffled or bassed out or something in the uh, in the first video or the, or the last video of the wiring. After I did that update, it sounds a lot. Man, okay. it's smooth as eggs now. Sounds smooth as eggs. But it also, I can't get the, uh, the microphone don't want to link with your, with my stock camera from my Android. So I had to download a couple other cameras to make that work. And that's where I'm having to learn and fiddle with all these, the white balance and all these new settings and stuff. Usually just before I just turned on the dang camera and started, uh, started recording. All right, now let's start cutting. Hopefully we're not cutting through no airlines or electrical. All right. You guys see, we got that gas tank in there. She's sitting down low. You can see how much more it's recessed by dropping it down, but it's in place. We've actually got it plugged into the fuel line. We don't have the plug plugged in yet, but the hard line into the fuel um, going up to the engine is plugged in. Man, that thing should be ready to take off then. Uh, I'm not sure if I showed y'all in the last video or if I showed y'all, oh, Michael Shrum brought in this old Graham Marcus yesterday and dropped it off. We're gonna be doing a full chassis swap on that one. Kind of like we got Lincoln right here. It's gonna have the, uh, gonna have the old Graham Marcus interior like Lincoln has all those luxuries it's gonna look like that inside there he brought this and dropped it off yesterday so I'm excited to do a video for you guys with that I don't think I've done a video other than Lincoln and I'm not sure if y'all watched that one that one's been a long time ago but this one's gonna be the full chassis swap this is an 01 and we'll be doing the full chassis swap keeping the uh, we're gonna be keeping the floorboard and the firewall to this truck right here and making it look like this one on the inside. I'm not sure if you guys have seen how this looks, but that's the inside of my old Lincoln truck there. So yeah, that project's coming up, man. That's gonna be cool. Those rims are gonna look sweet as hell on that truck. The truck he's bringing us is like a lunar green, but kind of patinaed. Looks really cool. He should be here with it in a few days. That'll be the next project in line. I think about swapping them old rims over on Lincoln for a few days and not telling him about it. Just kidding, I'm not going to do that, but it would look pretty cool. Making a little progress. I think Kathy's about to be here with some lunch. Oh, there's the 64 I was telling you guys about. If y'all have seen that in the background, that's going to be Kathy's right there. We're going to slam that baby all the way down. Short bed. We're going to paint it. I don't know if y'all remember the old slick truck I had back in the day, the 66. It was um, this exact same color right here, actually, on the top half right there. And then the bottom was white and the cab was white. We're gonna do it similar to that for Kathy, but it's gonna be like a lilac purple or like a lavender in here, that and white. And we're gonna do a nice interior with the, 
white leather and brown and lavender uh, piping and stuff like that. And it's going to be a really cool truck. Crown Vic swap on the front. We're going to do the 4.6. We're going to fiddle around with some AC stuff with the uh, the vintage air like I was telling y'all. Figure out something with the, uh, the gas tank in the back. Not sure what we're going to do with that yet, but uh, man, she's a dang solid truck. Look at this. We picked it up locally. Look at that step there. Super solid. Look at this. Solid as heck, man. Looking pretty good on the inside. This thing's actually just been sitting here for a couple weeks. We haven't got to do anything to it because I'm so dang busy. Well, all right, let's go get cleaned up. Kathy be here with lunch in a minute. All right, try number 313. now for a cruise down to Swanee today. Got Corey with us. We stopped at this cool this cool Texaco gas station down here in Cowan. Get some cool photos. Looking good laid out out here. Look, this guy damn busted us. See him in there? He got some cool trucks in there. That guy's been standing like that for like 30 years, man. I don't know what's up with him. Looking good out here though. Heck yeah, we're going for a little cruise down to up to Swanee. Check it out, go up to the cross. I'll get some good video footage for you guys. There's old train station over there. That's cool. Look Corey laying low out here. Awesome. Look at them. They're over there staring at that dude too. I don't know what's up that guy in there, man. What a freak. All right, we're going to head on down to the road to the next stop. All right, we're cruising up the mountain. we got Corey there behind us. No, you can only see me in the mirror. Corey's back there. There he is. You can see him. We're heading up here to the lookout spot up here, halfway up to Swanee from Cowan. But man, the leaves are so beautiful. It's beautiful up here. It feels great out today. I think that lookout's just right around the corner up here. Got pretty Kathy over here cruising with us. So I think when we get up here, I'm gonna like loop around and turn back this direction and park so me and Corey's like, um, like bumper to bumper kinda, you know? Dang, how far up is that thing? That spot's for sale. Anybody wanna buy that? It's for sale. All right, we are rolling up to the overlook. It looks like there's somebody already up here. We'll just pull to the side and wait for them to leave. All right, we made it up here to the Overlook. It looks like there's some people up here already. I'm going to chill and wait a minute and let them come down. I'd like to park mine and Corey's trucks together so we can get some cool videos. Yeah, they're coming down. Got us a table. We are number 19. Head on over here and get our drinks. Look, need some ice? Ice cube, baby. This place is really awesome, man. We're going back and show you around all shenanigans. Cool pictures on the wall. Excuse me, sir. I guess Kathy switched our table. I had us there. She must have not liked that location. 
swap our tables. Yeah. Well, Corey and Mandy have to sit in the sun. That way, Corey's neck's gonna get sunburned. I don't think Mandy's tall enough to get sunburned. Alrighty guys, we are back here Monday morning. We took a little cruise up to Swanee over the weekend. I, I posted in some clips there with, we went with Corey in the ship box. It was nice to do a little bit of cruising and get out of the shop for a little while. We went and had lunch up at Shenanigans. That was pretty good. Um, I lost a lot, a little bit of audio along the way. I had several clips that I had filmed for you guys, but the audio dropped. Uh, again, I'm still learning this stuff. So maybe it's something I did wrong. Anyway, before we left out Friday, I noticed we went to fire this baby up. I just want to let you guys know that uh, we had to change out the fuel pump. We got it to crank over and it just wasn't, the fuel pump wasn't prime. So I automatically thought I did something wrong. First thing you think of when you do these builds is, man, I forgot a ground somewhere. So we had all the wiring already cleaned up and done. I started tearing that stuff apart. I don't know if you can see it in there. You can see the wiring down there. I just started pulling the wiring back apart, checking my grounds, checking everything. The whole time I should have just made it simple and checked the fuel pump first, but I was thinking there's no way it's the fuel pump. Fuel pump just worked like two or three days ago in the car. I took the tank out, set it over there, set it right back. No way it was the fuel pump. But after doing some testing, it was the fuel pump. Slap fuel pump in that thing, she fired right up. I posted a clip also of us doing the first start there. So we're back here Monday morning and uh, I guess we're gonna get back in there and clean all of our wiring back up. Get all that cleaned up, tuck it back in the dash, get back to where we were. She's running now. So we're getting really close to being able to put all the interior back in there. Get all that wiring hidden, put the carpet back in, get the seat in, start doing all that stuff. Oh yeah, Chucky wants us to take off that dash too. So we're gonna take off that dash mat. I'm really curious what the dash looks like underneath there. He's just gonna rock it metal like that, which I think looks really cool. All right, man, I'm gonna quit yapping. I'm gonna set up his camera and we're gonna start doing some kind of work around here. Okie dokie, what are we gonna do today? Now we still got some random stuff just laying around like we've got this ground right here. It's just vice gripped onto that. We could go ahead and mount this in its home forever. We'll probably grind down a little spot and just put a bolt in right there and ground it straight to this uh, core support. Yeah, see, here's that fuel pump we pulled out. Don't know what was up with it, but this little pouch on the bottom or filter, whatever the heck that thing is, it was barely even hanging on anyways. Looks junky. So it's good we got that thing swapped out. I didn't know what the heck was going on though. I didn't know if maybe uh, we had the P71, so I knew it wasn't the Pats, but wasn't 100% sure. So I was all over the place trying to figure out why this thing wouldn't start. I think me and Chucky probably fiddled around for four or five hours, just messing with stuff, looking around at things, and just cranking and cranking and cranking. It never would start. Slap that fuel pump in there. She's running smooth as eggs now. We got some pretty cool photos and videos up there in Swanee. What do we got here? Somebody sneaking in the back. Kathy's sneaking in the back door there so she doesn't get on camera. Nice, Kathy. I took a lot of clips for you. It sucks that that audio keeps de deleting like that. But I'll get it figured out. It was probably just me yapping about some old boring stuff anyway, so I probably saved you guys some time. They were having like a homecoming or something up there, so it was super packed, really busy. It's usually not like that. Normally we can go up to that cross, get some cool pictures. No one's up there. Alrighty, guys, I've got a heck of a freaking mess with all these wires. Whew, I had that really clean at one time. All right, I need a flashlight. Oh, my, 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 my. Also, found out over the weekend that this is not a transmission hump module. Dead giveaway, orange tape on it. Thank you, Shane Pitts, for, uh, for pointing that out to me. I don't know why I didn't think of it, man. Orange tape. I don't think we even need this. So this don't need to go under the seat. You can put it up in the dash. Hell, we can just unhook it. 
We can just unhook it and get rid of this thing. We can stuff this wiring up in the dash. And then later on, it probably would have helped in the video where I was doing the wiring to point that out. But I didn't know that then. So if you guys keep on watching the videos, you'll know that when you do your wiring, you don't have to use this. You can cut this and trim it all the way back and deep pin it or whatever the heck you want to do with it. Oh, wow. Whew. What the heck? All right, guys, so we went ahead and got all them wires put back up in there. Got it looking pretty good again. And uh, I went ahead and unbolted this dash pad while I was in there. It's a lot easier to do that if you guys ever want to remove yours. Dang near all this crap's got to come out because there's bolts everywhere. They're all across the front here. They're in the back back there. Maybe a total of 10 of them, but man, they're in there. Anyway, we're about to pull this thing off. I don't think this dash pad has ever been off in its life since this truck was new. Pretty excited about seeing what that looks like. Got the camera set up so we can see that together. I'm not sure how this thing's gonna come out. I think I've got all the bolts out of it, but it's a little, it was a little stuck. She has been on there for a long time. I wonder if you got a, how this thing comes out. She's breaking apart now. There's no going back now, Chucky. Oh, man. Looks awesome under there, though. Heck, yeah. I seen just a little bit of it. Let me get these gauges out of the way here. Just a little stuck. Oh, we just busted all the way through the dash there. Boom, there she goes. There she goes. Can you guys see that? Not sure how I like that right there where you can see your your defrost, but uh, let me grab the camera and show you up in here a little bit better. You guys see that? She looks good, man. Nice and shiny too under there. Like the clear coat's still good. Awesome. Don't really care for the uh, the defrost spots where it comes out. Maybe we make some type of little grate that looks similar to that to go over these. But it's out of there. Go around the front and check it out. That looks cool. Pretty dang cool, man. Well, all right, now that we've got that out of the way, we've got our wires tucked back up. We need to, uh, I guess we need to get our fuse box mounted up here. Light box mounted to the side right there. And the rest of these wires just kind of tucked up. We'll put our carpet back in, start setting everything down. All right, let's hop in here and take a little look. Ow, gosh, dang, that hurt. All right. Got everything looking pretty good. We got all of our wires tucked away and cleaned up. That's the OBD2. We still got to mount that under here. But everything is cleaned up. We've got the radio back in and the um, the AC controls there. HVAC controls. We've got them in place. Looking pretty good. Let me see if I can get this flashlight set up. Oh, there we go. Looking pretty good. Everything's usable from up here. Looks nice. Barely fits in that hole right there. But it does. Looks good. Everything works. We can slide our ashtray back in and uh, I'm going to wait on the glow box there because I might have to get in and do some of the stuff to the AC there. All right. We got all that tucked in looking real good. Got our fuse panel up in there. See, it looks good. You can get to it, but from up here, it's nice and clean. You can't see it. And we've got our little uh, light box. So you can turn your lights on and off for your gauges there. But she's coming along pretty good. Uh, not sure what else we're going to do for right now. So I think we're going to go ahead and start working on these gauges. We've got them set up over here. We've got to integrate these old Crown Vic gauges with that dash right there. So usually what I do is we're probably going to cut right here, cut this piece out, take this little center piece out, and that will fit up in there pretty decent. Let's start taking it apart and see what we can do. Man, that wood grain's nice. It looks really good. This truck is actually in pretty decent shape to be for a 69 and to sit out in the woods for 20 years. Let me see if I can show y'all this. Like, look at this sticker up here for the cargo light. That thing looks brand new. And just all this wood grain stuff in here is real nice. It's not faded or chipped up. All right, so we're gonna start disassembling these two pieces and see how we can make them look. All right, first here, we need to get this back piece off. Um, let's see, what do we got? Maybe a seven? No. 
I already know, guys. It's not going to be. Then it's going to be like a quarter. I already feels like maybe it's a quarter to get these out. Yep. Go on, spider. Okay, we've got that out now. We need to get... We've got to take this clear cover off here. I wonder if that's going to be a quarter also. No, nah, it's a bit smaller than that. Michael Shrum's heading up here with his uh, with the pieces to his truck that we're going to be doing that swap on that 01 Grand Marcus outside. Yeah, he just loaded up his uh, all of his pieces on the trailer. He's heading down here. Boy, that thing is in the cab. He's got the doors off the fenders. It's in several pieces. So we'll be unloading that here shortly when he gets here. Dang, that's going to fit pretty darn tootin'. Almost looks pretty cool. I hate to cut out that Ford Center right there, but we've got to. But it looks pretty good almost so far there. All right, man. We're about to cut these suckers. All right, we'll worry about sanding down all these little edges and cleaning this up after we make everything, make sure everything's going to fit in there. We got her opened up. All right. Heading in the right direction there. So we're getting closer. All right, I don't know if you can see what I got going on here, but I shaved down that little bottom edge to get this bottom piece closer. Because if you guys have done this before, you know this thing like kind of tilts down. So that bottom edge being shaved off gets this bottom closer to it, which means we got to do less of an angle out. Um, I don't like how it's cutting off the Speedo up there. Crap, man, you guys couldn't even see that. Sorry, man. Between 60 and 90 up there, it's kind of like cutting off. Once it's tilted out more, you'll be able to see it a little bit more. But it is what it is, man. I can't come down any lower, and I don't want to cut any off that top there. So we're just going to make it look as good as we can like that. It's fitting in pretty good so far. We'll make ourselves up a little template to something to build right here. All right, so as far as the uh, that wire they had hooked up with the toggle switch to the blower motor there, man, it was just simply a fuse. Found a blown fuse there to the blower motor, swapped it out. All the controls on the AC work normal now. So... We got that taken care of. We'll clean that up and tape that up. I left it a little exposed in case we had to jump back into it. Now that I know we don't, we'll clean it up. Got that finished up. All right, now we're still working on the gauges. Um, the little piece that I made is right here. We got it painting black. And then it's just going to sit. Uh, I'm not sure if I showed y'all the template, but it's just going to sit right there on the edge and come across. Give us a little, Give us a little angle like that so it'll sit pretty good in there. Um, we're waiting on Michael. He'll be here any minute with his truck and all those parts. Dang, man, I left my flashlight on. That son of a gun's been home for like two hours. These batteries sure are good on these things. I'm not lying. I've left these things on for two, three hours sometimes. Come back, it's still lit up just sitting there. Recommend these things definitely. We'll get it up there. Put it on charge in a minute. That other one's charging up right now. Uh, what else we got going on? So I thought we were going to finish it up in this video for you guys, but... With the clips of us going cruising, it's just making the video a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. So we're probably going to be wrapping this video up here pretty soon. Don't think we're going to finish in this video, but we do got her fired up, running nice and smooth. Uh, found out that dang fuel pump back there was causing us some issues. Got that taken care of. Yeah, not a lot going on in this video, man. But uh, just wanted to get some content out for you guys. Well, okie dokie, guys. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Man, I appreciate you guys hanging out and watching the video. We got a few things accomplished in this one. We're getting closer and closer every day. I think one day this week, we're going to head on down to Chattanooga and get that drive shaft fixed up. That way we can slap that son of a gun in and uh, she'll be rolling smooth as eggs. We've got all the stuff on the inside pretty much cleaned up. So join us back on the next video where we continue just pecking away on this thing. And hopefully we'll get it finished up in that next video. So, uh, you know, man, if you guys like the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs up button anyways. Thanks for watching.